You know, I'm getting a little bit sick of everybody trying to pretend that this is some sort of normal campaign, right? Oh, there's a debate next week and two months to go of campaigning before the big election day. This whole thing is, in many ways, illegitimate, all right? Kamala Harris received zero votes. Joe Biden, they made go away, and we haven't gotten a sufficient explanation. This is a big deal. This is all wrong, all of it. And this illusion that Kamala Harris is some sort of responsible statesman. This is all nonsense. It is all parallel universe Star Trek episode stuff. And what about poor Joe Biden? I even have a little bit of a smidge of sympathy for him. He was the last one to find out, apparently. Every one of them, they all said I should stay in the race. Stay in the race. No one said, none of the people said, I should leave. But if they do? Well, it's like, <laughs> we're not going to do that. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Your allies, James Clyburn, Nancy Pelosi, have kind of put it out there that they're waiting for your decision, giving you time to make your decision. What I hear from you is that you made your decision. Are you still comfortable in that decision? Has anything changed in the last several days? No. 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee in the Democratic Party. Okay? I listen to them. Yeah. And sometimes he was, you know his little whispery self there. And then he'd go out on the road and yell it, yell it. I'm staying in. I'm a nominee of the Democratic Party. I'm a nominee of this party because millions of Democrats like you just voted for me in primaries all across America. You voted for me to be your nominee. No one else. You, the votes, the voters did that. And despite despite that some folks don't seem to care who you voted for. Well, guess what? They're trying to push me out on the race. No! Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I'm staying in the race. Yeah, yeah he's got a point. 14 million people. Zero people voted for Kumala. And again, it's like, well, uh, th that she's been the nominee all along. She hasn't. This is all a great big scam. And... Joe Biden just one day goes on national television and says he's no longer in the race, doesn't really give us a reason why, just bows out. We haven't gotten a reason since. I mean, how did they get him? How did he go from, I'm staying in the race till Kamala's the nominee? How, how, how did that happen? Does it have anything to do with uh, Biden family corruption? Hunter, did you hear? Pled guilty today. Pled guilty in a case that does implicate, let's face it, Joe Biden. Perhaps. Did that have a role? I think the people have a right to know. And if our media aren't going to, if they're not curious, Joe Biden himself actually has a moral obligation. And if he doesn't think he does, well, he made a big promise on Inauguration Day to us and to God. My fellow Americans, I closed the day where I began with the sacred oath before God and all of you. I give you my word. I will always level with you. Wow. Before God, he will always level with us. He hasn't. <laughs> just, man, when you talk like that, you're, you're just asking for trouble from the big man. You can't talk like that. So the fake news just goes along with it. Yeah, we got to. They don't even ask Joe about this. They have, they have opportunities. They don't. They never even ask him about the laptop. Three and a half, four years almost. Not one question about that laptop for Joe Biden. What kind of upside down society do we have here? So it is Kumala, and she's not normal. She's not nice. She is radical, but they're going to pretend that she's not. Remember the Black Lives Matter uh, riots all over the place? Any normal, civilized person would say that this is bad. But a person like Kamala Harris said, this is great and should continue without abatement. She said it. They're not no. gonna stop, they're not gonna stop. And that's, they're not, this is a movement, I'm telling you, they're not gonna stop. And, and everyone beware, because they're not gonna stop, it is gonna, they're not gonna stop before election day in November, and they're not gonna stop after election day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not gonna let up, and they should not, and we should not. Sounds like a, 
threat, kind of, when you think about it. So you have these radical ideas with an abysmal, I mean, worse than abysmal. What are they responsible for? What have they brought the American people? Let's go through the highlights, huh? No border. She's responsible for that. Next, please. Our loss in Afghanistan. She is responsible for that. Number three, the depravity, this obsession with the sexualization of children. She is responsible for that. The crime wave, the delegitimization of law enforcement, which she was just talking about right there. She's responsible. And everybody knew, look, you know, you couldn't pick on Joe Biden, the media, but you could pick on her. Remember when she was vice president? It was open season. They couldn't go after Biden for a lot of, I don't know, I, I still can't figure that one out. But her, they felt totally safe doing it up until about uh, a month and a half ago. Swing voters don't like Harris. And focus groups conducted by the Democratic National Committee also found Harris rubs some people the wrong way. When she doesn't like a question that she gets, uh, she often deflects a, in a way that can seem defensive. They don't like her. There's lots of reasons they don't like her. We're hearing it from main, mainstream media. Uh, one mm -hmm. outlet after another. One leak after another. Uh, that Kamala Harris is the worst vice president ever, the worst politician ever. Not only the worst vice president, the worst politician ever. The liberals are saying it. And then, I don't know what happened, Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi go into a room with Joe Biden, and they arrange for this incompetent person to be the nominee. And look at her press now. Out of nothing, she's everything. Her popularity, record high. Look at her, her Beyonce moment, everything. She nailed the greatest speech of her life. Oh, uh, surging, surging, surging. This is... Uh, more than propaganda. I don't know what it is, but it's it's kind of scary, actually, what they have created here. The same media, we could expect it, I guess, from them. I mean, they're creating this about her. What did they keep from us about Joe Biden? When he would go out and have helter skelter screw ups, what happened next? We're going to seize their yachts, their luxury homes, and other ill begotten gains of Putin's kleptocracy. <laughs> Yeah. Kleptocracy and klep the guys who are the kleptocracies. <laughs> but these are bad guys. <laughs> I thought the poor guy was having a stroke. I think that was worthy of media attention. They paid none. Zero. We talked about it. Maybe one guy over there at Fox. How about, uh, what was this? Oh, yeah, the watch moment. Or No, when he fell down. You realize this was basically covered up? You know, poor Gerald Ford slipped once and it defined his presidency. One of the biggest, the network that's going to host the debate next week did not cover this. Look, it's important when the president takes a spill like that. You could say, oh, that's superficial. It's not. It's important. Everything is news when it comes to the president. And then this, remember, the watch moment. It infuriated Americans nationwide. It certainly infuriated the Gold Star families. And they didn't say a damn thing about it. The media pretended it did not happen. And more recently, the whole Normandy fiasco, the whole world saw him going in the wrong direction, talking to trees, just not getting it. And everybody in America pretended that wasn't happening. So Kamala Harris right now is the beneficiary of a multi-billion dollar media campaign makeover. If you put a dollar figure on this, it would be in the many, many billions of dollars. And she's in this cocoon. Everybody's nice to her. Nothing incoming. It's all imagery. It's all nonsense. It's all balloons. It's nothing. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is out there slugging it away. You know, the threat to democracy is actually going out there with his ideas, taking questions from all kinds of people, defending his ideas, promoting his ideas. That's what you're supposed to do. That's America. This is tradition. By the way, he was at the Economic Club of New York with some of the biggest brains in uh, uh, the country, and he laid out some interesting new proposals. The key to this effort will be a pro-American trade policy that uses tariffs to encourage production here and bring trillions and trillions of dollars back home. I will create a government efficiency commission task with conducting a complete financial and performance audit of the entire federal government and making recommendations for drastic reforms. We need to do it. 
Can't go on the way we are now. First, I will end Kamala Harris's anti-energy crusade and implement a policy of energy abundance, energy independence, and even energy dominance. We're going to make this into an incredible country that can afford to take care of its people, and then we'll worry about the rest of the world. Let's help other people. But we're going to take care of our country first. This is about America first. It's about make America great again. We have. It's what leadership looks like, okay? Not waving and smiling and getting on and off airplanes. And after his speech, he took questions from some of the smartest people, again, in the country. Uh, John Paulson was there. The guy, the head of the largest law firm in North America was there. I mean, Kamala can't do that. She barely got through that Dana Bash parent-teachers conference, right? <laughs> she can't do it. So again, none of this is normal. Kumala, right? None of this should be happening, but it is. We can't pretend, we can't forget. This is not normal. Uh, I'd say borderline dangerous, actually, when you think about it. And, uh, ooh, you know who else is getting off the hook? Tim, Tim Waltz. Watch this. Hope woke up like many of you did five weeks ago and dad said, Dad, you're the only person I know who's in elected office. You need to stop what's happening with this. I'll take my kick in the butt for the NRA. I spent 25 years in the Army and I hunt. And I gave the money back. And I'll tell you what I have been doing. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment. But we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. Definition of stolen valor right there. Now, I think we should play this clip all the time. One thing conservative media does not do very well, quite frankly, is get the drumbeat going, the momentum, right? Oh, we, we did that story. We did that story on Tuesday. We did a follow-up on Wednesday, and then we move on to the next thing we're supposed to react to. No, we need them to react to us, all right? You know, remember two years, they beat the drums, CNN, the New York Times, over nothing, Russia collusion, boom, 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 boom. Then it was nothing, then they move on. We don't bang the drum enough. This is the definition of stolen valor. We demand an explanation, and we must find out who this guy really is. He lies all the time. This is not a one-day story or a two-day story. This renders him ineligible to be vice president of the United States. If we had a healthy democracy, we would have... 4,000 reporters camped outside of his house, wherever the hell he lives in Minnesota. And not only this, what's the deal with the drunk driving? I mean, maybe it's not a deal breaker, but when you look at everything else, the lying and the speed, this guy wasn't going 20 miles per hour over this. He was going 95. I've never driven a car that fast. Maybe. All right. What do we have here? A DUI. Uh, 96 and a 55, 0.128 blood alcohol level. He pled guilty, $200 fine. Now, all right, does that in and of itself render him ineligible to be the vice president? No, no, it doesn't. But maybe this part does. When he runs for Congress, he comes up with this cockamamie excuse that it had something to do with a, a military injury. According to Waltz's campaign staff, Waltz denied being drunk the night of the incident. Waltz was hard of hearing, a result of his years as an artillery soldier in the Army National Guard, and had trouble hearing the trooper. So um, this actually, I just, I just realized something. You know, my father was an artillery officer in the Marine Corps and actually had his hearing affected. <laughs> he is hard of hearing, for real. Uh, disabled veteran, hard of hearing. How about that? I don't like this at all. This is another example of stolen valor. I couldn't hear the cop. No, he had 0.128, 96 miles per hour of the speed limit. At least your family's coming forward, right? The brother, did you hear this story? I love it. Jeff Waltz said that, uh, well, you don't, my brother shouldn't be the vice president. How about all of his cousins and aunts and uncles, the Nebraska clan of the Waltz family, all for Trump? And Donald Trump has noticed. This is kind of cool. Thank you very much, Jeff. It is a great honor to have your endorsement. I look forward to meeting you soon. That is great stuff.